Undoubtedly, financial services have been heavy users of what we call nowadays traditional AI. Today, I'm joined by Charith Mendes, who is the head of worldwide banking industry for nearly four years at AWS. Let me welcome him. Welcome, Charith. Great, great to see you. Okay, thank you so much for having me on. I'd like to ask you, uh, what are you seeing in the market? What kind of business areas or product areas are financial services starting the generative AI journey, which is an extension of the traditional AI's journey? Yeah, and I like how you said that, yeah. Like, I think when, when we look at financial service organizations, whether they're banks, capital market customers, asset managers, it is really a, that extension, as you say, from what we class as traditional AI to now what we're seeing as uh, generative AI. I think what we're seeing is every part in that value chain is being impacted or being uh, addressed from POC and also into a production point of view. You could see, imagine the normal use cases in terms of customer experience, you know, making call center agents much more efficient by using generative AI to search knowledge repositories through to being able to support Q&A like we've seen with a number of customers explore with human in the loop. When we go into the middle office area, we see a lot of focus on operational efficiency and being able to pull intent, content, et cetera, both from uh, internal documents like mortgage documents and wealth documents, but also external documents as well. And then you see very interesting use cases further down the field in terms of fraud and financial crime analysis, including how some of our customers are using generative AI to be able to streamline the process when it comes to filing SAR requests or suspicious activity reports by using generative AI models to both extract, summarize, and generate some of the reporting activities. So what's really interesting is that, like you say, it's really become an extension of what we see in terms of AI being deployed in each of the use cases, but it's taking on a much more extension part of that from a natural language point of view and actually extending where you see the traditional AI capabilities uh, coming into the forefront as well. And, and really to simplify this, even further, like, let me give you a really tangible example. You know, being able to actually use AI ML to be able to predict what a customer wants from a personalization point of view, and then using generative AI to personalize that message for that customer, and even potentially personalize the imagery. That's a really great example of just how AI or traditional AI and generative AI works together in our banking customers. That's interesting. And we all know that this is a journey that has just started. This is the second year, Charith, that AWS is partnering with NVIDIA at Money 2020 at Europe in Amsterdam to organize an AI summit. How are banks staying ahead of the curve and leveraging these AI advancements to really gain a competitive advantage, an edge, a differentiating factor, if you want? Yeah, and it's been great to be a partner of NVIDIA again this year, and I know we've done it now in the EU and then also in the US as well, and then hopefully standing room only, like Kevin says, in terms of this one that we're going to do in Money 2020 in Amsterdam this year. I think when it comes to how banks and financial services are leveraging this to drive competitive advantage, I, I think the ones that I see really focused on is really focusing on what is the immutable need for those customers. So instead of thinking about this as a technology in its own right, which it is, but really thinking about how do I actually apply it in the use cases, very similar to what, what I spoke about. So really being intrinsic on the use cases. Number two, I think, as you say, we're very early in sort of the adoption of generative AI across the financial services industry and across all industries. So really understanding that, you know, when it comes to model choice, it's very, very important when you think about model choice, being able to pick and choose the right model, both today for the use case that you're addressing, but also having that flexibility to be able to evolve that over time as models become more relevant and either more specialized or more broad as we're seeing in the industry. Because I, th I don't think there's a, this, there's a view that there's going to be one model that rules them all over the longer term as well. So it's really being able to have that choice. The third thing that we see, and we see this across the board, and you know, many companies have talked about this, is really getting the data right. Because if you think about what you're going to be feeding into the generative AI models, or even the traditional AI models for that matter, it's really about getting the right data at the right latency, the right timing, so that you can make the right inference for the use case that you're doing. Whether that's a marketing use case where you're trying to you know, position something above the line or personalize to a customer, 
or whether that's a broad use case, being able to look at a transaction and being able to summarize that to do some sort of activity reporting as well. Um, those are the, what we really see. And then finally, when you think about generative AI and AI more broadly, it's really making sure you build at enterprise scale. So when we think about financial services more broadly and the banking industry more specifically, being in a regulated industry, it's very important that we're able to explain the models and there's transparency in terms of why the model did something it did and how it can be explained to the regulator or someone else. So that's very important as well. So when I boil down to it, there's probably, as I said, five key things. Focus on the immutable need. Really focus on choice in terms of models so you're able to pivot and change. Get the data right. And understand that given that we work in a regulated industry, that transparency is key. And, and I, I would flip the order around. I'm sure you didn't mean to have that order, but we always in financial services have to start with the regulated mindset, then, uh, you know, look at the, the, um, the data architecture because we are a traditional industry. We do have all these concerns of, of trust and transparency. And then we have to look at, at the technicality. Thank you, Charith. And, and I'm very excited to be joining you at Money 2020 on Tuesday, June 4th uh, at the AI Summit. I invite all our listeners to check this out. And definitely, if they're there, come and listen to the discussion with all the, the variety of participants that will be there. Yeah, thank you so much. And looking forward to seeing you there as well.